And Lizette Salas joins us now. Lizette, it's great to see you. Your backstory is one of the most inspiring in the game. You had people doubt you. You were told Latinas don't play golf. What kept you focused and strong in the face of so many doubters? You know, it's um, my family. My family has been my backbone since the beginning. And I've been fortunate enough to have teammates, um, coaches, and caddies who have become family to remind me of of the bigger goal and to, to keep pushing forward. And, you know, of course there've been times where I want to, you know, throw in the towel and, you know, be normal, but, um, I've, I've accepted that this is a journey that I was meant to be on. And I'm just so fortunate to have my family come along for the ride and, uh, no pun intended the ride. Um, but yeah, it's been a, an amazing, 10 years so far, and I look forward to, to the next. Speaking of that ride, Lizette, I'm very curious, how many miles were put on your dad's pickup truck during the earliest days of your career? Man, I'm surprised that thing is still running. Um, I mean, it's over, uh, right now it has over 100,000 miles on it. Um, I, that's my dad's prized possession, um, but we took several cross-country trips um, in my early stages of my career. And that truck, that truck's another member of our family. Um, it might be passed down to generations, who knows, but it's, um, it's that, that truck is a huge part of my story and it became home for a long time. And uh, I'm just, I'm very fortunate and, and thankful for the, for the crazy idea that my dad had and, and it all, it was all worth it. You've talked about how in the earliest days of your career you felt unwelcome because of your heritage, because you weren't uh, a country club cookie cutter kid. Have you felt that at points during your professional career as well? Yeah, I think at every stage of my career there's always been some sort of, not necessarily doubt, more of confusion. Um, and my parents did a wonderful job of letting me know right off the bat as a young child that I am different and people are going to treat me different based on, you know, my skin color or where I grew up. And um, so I was ready for those challenges. And although it was very hurtful, um, I think my game spoke for itself and, you know, turned some heads and, and convinced uh, the majority of the golf world that, uh, you know, the golf ball doesn't see, doesn't see the color of your skin. And, um, you know, again, I'm just very fortunate to have my inner circle, my, the core people in my career, you know, my coaches, caddies and trainers who believe in me and, um, didn't want to change who I am. I think I stayed true to myself, true to my roots throughout my career. And, um, again, I'm just very, very thankful. Lizette, it can be a burden to be one of the few or the only one in a job or a role. As a Latina on the LPGA, how have you managed being unique while not letting it become a burden? Do you have times to, to exhale and just be and not always have to be a representative of? Yeah, I mean, there have been stages where I felt overwhelmed with, with the support and wanting to do more, and but I quickly learned that representation goes so far and just the tour allowing me to be myself and again the people supporting that and loving me for who I am and I think it just made it easier for me to just do my job and I'm seeing I've seen so much growth in the numbers of Latinas picking up the game um young Latinas daughters coming with their dads to the golf course. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing to see. And, you know, it's unfortunate to not be the only Latina on the LPGA tour. Um, you know, we're, we're changing the current a little bit and we're giving, you know, some flavor, some spice, some, some passion out on the golf course. And, um, I think it's, a I think this is the start of something new and I'm, you know, I never thought I was going to be this spokesperson or this representation, but um, I take it with so much pride and I love my culture. I love how I grew up and um, I hope the next generation will do the same. Is that you're one of a number of golfers over the last couple of years who've talked publicly about the mental health struggles 
around this game, not necessarily just in a pandemic context, but just the demands of the job that you do. Mm -hmm. Are there enough resources at a, at a tour level to help people with that aspect of professional golf? Yeah, I believe the more the more athletes speak about their journeys or their struggles, I think it it creates uh, a bigger community. Um, especially when I was going through what I went through, um, you know, the golf world had my back and I was able to to push through. And we see we see that we're we're more alike than we believe that we are. And um, I think going forward, I think I think the tour will take a, a much bigger priority uh, for mental health. And because as quickly as we can win, as we can win and play golf, it, the next day we don't know what we're doing. Um, this is a very tough sport uh, mentally, physically, and you know I'm, I'm just again I'm fortunate to you know push through the dark times and have friends and family that um, to support me. And you know I just hope that the next generation will have more outlets than we do. Well, that spring of 2020, there was a big push around the game of golf for diversity, equity, inclusion during the pandemic post George Floyd. I'm curious, a couple of years later, what do you see on the LPGA in terms of diversity, equity and inclusion? Well, I think I think diversity and inclusion has been the DNA of the LPGA for a very long time. And and it took the, the pandemic to kind of highlight that sort of aspect in the golf world. And again, just by sharing my story, I've been able to stay authentic to myself and and be that representation and let the rest of the world know and um, you know, whether it's business or sports, that that everyone matters. You know, everyone's everyone's story is is worth to hear and to listen to. And I'm again I'm fortunate to have sponsors that have really taken that initiative um, to its core and and in their in their boardrooms and um, you know not and also supporting their athletes. So um, you know the the world of golf is changing and I think it's a reflection of the rest of the world. And um, again, I'm just very lucky, blessed, and um, you know I, t I am very thankful for for the job that I have. Well, you carry your role with tremendous grace, but you're a player. At the end of the day, a couple of straight the top tens for you on the LPGA. How excited are you about the state of your game heading into this final stretch? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, we had two really solid weeks, and you know I'm starting to get my stride back. And you know next year is is a is a highlight year. You see a lot of red, white, and blue in the in the in the back here in my office. So that's a big goal of mine. And and you know we're seeing a lot of up and coming superstars on, on on the U.S. side. So I'm going to do my best to be on that team. But again, with that breakthrough win after so long uh, earlier this summer, my confidence is back and and my team is ready to work. And again, just fortunate for my team, uh, my coach, caddy, trainer, everyone who has just been supportive throughout my entire career. I you know, could have done it without them. Lizette, thank you for sharing your story and thank you for being so fierce. Best of luck the rest of the season. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.